Yeah, I think two areas that we're pretty interested in are on the technology side, um, but not necessarily related to 5G directly. You know, on one hand, I think there is this broader trend of digitalization going on across the world, and China needs to join this trend. China needs to have its own software packages as opposed to using something from a U.S. or European vendor. Uh, so there's just a lot of opportunities in terms of this digitalization trend and ways expressed in software and in productivity enhancing uh, type of changes to the way corporates and consumers behave. A second area I think that we're quite interested in, which has gotten a lot of headlines, is that China needs to self-supply semiconductors. China consumes a lot of the world's semiconductors. It doesn't supply a lot of the world's semiconductors. So while China doesn't necessarily have the capabilities to compete at the cutting edge yet, there's just a lot for them to do in terms of some of the lagging technologies that they used to purchase from U.S. vendors or from uh, vendors that use U.S. equipment, such as uh, some of the Taiwanese semiconductor companies. So these two areas, semis and software, are two areas that we find very interesting within a technological context as the U.S. and China diverge in terms of their technological footprints. Well, since you believe that tech is not dead then, Howard, that brings me to the broader question. I mean, we've had a lot of R words lately, right? 2020 was obviously the big R word of recession. And now 2021 has been a lot about reflation and rotation. So with this rotation away from a number of the growth stocks and high flying stocks like the tech to sort of the value stocks, I'm wondering whether or not that rotation might be coming to an end. And therefore, to your point about tech, that it's actually starting to see some pretty good values being thrown up in the growth area and value looking a whole lot less value. Yeah, I think we try to stay away from predicting style rotations and uh, you know forecasting very broad uh, macro trends to the extent we can, and to focus really on idiosyncratic opportunities. Uh, but you know, to your point, I think if we look at technology, there really are just a lot of different types of opportunities. Because on one hand, you have quote unquote defensive technology that uh, enables stay at home, play at home, shop from home type of trends, and those stocks have actually done well. They tend to be a little bit rate sensitive, uh, and they haven't uh, done as well of late over the last few weeks as this rotation has taken place. Um, but also within technology, you can actually can find value in typicality also, because areas such as semiconductors, LCD panels, passive components, etc., these are basically the copper or oil of the technology technology world. So there have been supply restraints and there's just a lot of demand coming through, whether for structural trends, uh, such as people still replacing their devices, or cyclical trends, such as what's happening with uh, auto semis and uh, the resumption of auto production globally. So from our perspective, I think it's not necessarily a growth versus value uh, type of uh, thinking that permeates our portfolios, but rather cyclicality versus non-cyclical. And there are really great values, I think, to be found on both sides, and particularly in the cyclical side, which is where a lot of our recent portfolio actions have been focused in technology. Mm.